everyone, Morgan here. A little different background here in the RV, right? <laughs> uh, so sorry about the noise if you hear a little humming in the background. I'm trying to talk a little bit louder over it. I have my microphone, you know, my external mic all set up and everything, but that's the AC. It's getting a little warm today. We've had some cold days, but it's getting a little warmer. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the PG&E blackouts. Um, a lot of people were unprepared. Now this was, it wasn't just a minor inconvenience. I mean, this was PG&E intentionally shutting off the power because they want to mitigate the risk for themselves and they're saying for others, okay, um, over uh, wildfire damage. You know, their equipment has actually caused wildfires um, in the past, like in Paradise in 2017, um, it caused like 85 deaths, I believe it was, um, in Paradise because of a wildfire that was caused by their equipment. So they're trying to mitigate this risk by um, their solution is to cut off the power um, to areas in which there are really high winds, okay? So that if, you know, their power, you know, infrastructure or whatever were to go down or malfunction in any way, um, you know, during those high winds, the wildfire could be, uh, you know, the wildfire wouldn't happen because the electricity isn't flowing basically is their solution to this. Um, now this is causing a lot of outrage, you know, obviously, you know, uh, PG, a lot of people are saying that PG&E is caught, are, are holding people hostage over this manufactured crisis, you know, it's PG&E, this is their only solution, you know, they're saying, oh, well, I'm going to just cut off the power to millions of people to save my butt, <laughs> my corporation butt, right? Um, instead of just trying to fix the problem, you know, they know what their problems are. I'm, I can almost guarantee, you know, I mean, their infrastructure is, is weak and they need to fix their problems. And so they're trying to say that, oh, well, we're shutting off the power so that while this happens, we can really work on the, you know, we can really tweak it and make it work. Blah. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to get too much into this. Okay. Um, a lot of other channels have talked about PG and E and, and this ridiculous, um, you know, manufactured crisis that they've created. But I want to talk about how people um, were panicking over this. You know, a lot of people were kind of just like shrugging it off at first. It's like, ah, you know, it's been a few hours. I mean, ice cream by candlelight, right? And they were just kind of laughing it off. But then by the next day, some people were really getting mad because first of all, they couldn't find things on the shelf. Okay. A lot of people were going to get generators. You know, they weren't there. Okay. People have to understand that there's only a finite amount of product on the shelves and in stores, period. Okay. And so once that stuff is gone, it's gone. Okay. But this stuff was affecting, um, not just individuals, but, but businesses as well. Okay. Their credit card machines are down. So now only people with cash can now purchase afterwards. So if you didn't have cash, okay. Um, then you're not buying anything, you know, while the electricity is down. Okay. Um, so that's first lesson, always have cash. And we talk about it all the time, always have cash, a good amount of cash on hand, you know, if you need to buy anything. Honestly, you shouldn't need to buy anything though. Um, you should have at least two weeks worth of food. That's a good start. Two weeks worth of food is a good start. Non-perishable food plus alternative ways to cook that food. Um, let's say you're relying on an electrical grill, right? Or electrical uh, oven or, or um, stovetop or whatever, you know, you need some alternative, alternative ways to cook. Then you need two weeks worth of, I got three things here, alternative, uh, bleh, you need two weeks worth of water, at least two gallons of water per person per day. Plus don't forget your pets. Um, and that's for at least two weeks. Okay. So you have your food, your alternative ways to cook, and then uh, your water. Um, and then you need your alternative, uh, you need your backup, battery backups for any medical devices that are literally there to keep you alive or any medical devices that you may need, you know, that battery backup for. Now, quick um, thing about the medical devices is you can ask your doctor and your doctor will actually offer this, should offer this, you know, your, your battery backups, your, the backups to use as you know, you're going out, you know, all these people with, um, you know, oxygen and stuff like this, you know, you have, uh, those backups, you know, you have the battery backups, you have these things and the doctors are willing to give you this. If they don't willingly give it to you, ask them for it, ask them for these life saving, 
uh, battery backups, you know, for your medical devices and you could get it. Okay. This is very important. Have a backup of any, um, you know, life saving medications or anything, you know, you need a good supply of this stuff and your doctors will give it to you. Ask them for it. Say, Hey, I just want to have a little bit of this on hand for emergencies. Can I get, you know, an extra prescription or something? They will say yes. And if they don't, find another doctor because they should. Okay. They know that you need this stuff. And so ask them for it and they should give it to you. Okay. Um, so, um, other than that, you know, people wouldn't be panicking if they were prepared. I really want people to learn from the, these blackouts. Okay. And I need you guys to really be prepared. I need you guys to, you know, have these resources you know, have the flashlights, have the candles, have a no weather radio, have some sort of Intel. Even if you, you can buy a little ham radio, even if you don't have your ham license, you can listen to Intel from other hams or, you know, local news sources, things like that. Get the Intel, have a battery backup for your phone. So, you know, even if you don't have, um, like actual internet, you have service on your phone, but you have to keep in mind that, you know, cell towers can only accept so many signals at one point. So, you know, it could be really crowded in the very beginning or it could be crowded throughout the whole time, you know, and it could be really slow, um, almost impossible. Um, but you know, at, at a certain point you could be able to get through, it just depends on how many cell towers are around you, you know, what service you have, et cetera, et cetera. It's a whole thing. Um, so, you know, the thing is you would not be panicking if you were prepared. That's the whole point of this video. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, with these blackouts, you know, and some people only got notice, you know, 24 hours notice, but you shouldn't have to rely on notice. Now I know that this kind of came out of the blue with PG and E I get it. And a lot of people were kind of like, what, you know, but in general, if you're prepared for emergencies and disasters, then you're prepared for some sort of blackout situation like this. You know, I mean, these were lasting several days and these were even lasting in, in some areas in which there was no wind, P, you know, PG and E was just shutting off power, you know, for like, Oh, well there might be, you know, uh, stuff like that. So it was a really, it's a really crazy situation. And, um, you know, but, but we just want to be prepared for this. Um, have that food and water have, if you can have extra gas around, especially like if you have a generator, then definitely have that extra gas around, you know, if you can, um, you know, make sure it's safe and all that. But otherwise, you know, uh, pumps, uh, most gas stations should have the backup battery power, but you know, some might not. Um, so you may not be able to get gas or, you know, it, because of the crisis, it may be a manufactured crisis of there's just no gas because everybody's running to the pumps to get gas. Everybody's running to the grocery stores to get gas. Everybody's running to the stores in general to get the generators, to get the flashlights, to get the batteries, to get the candles. Don't be those people who are running to the grocery stores to be prepared when you could have already been prepared well before this stuff happens. And I know with a lot of you, I'm preaching to the choir, but I really hope that this is reaching those people in California and even beyond. I want you guys to learn from these, these rolling blackouts because PG and E has said they are going to continue this. Okay. They're going to continue these blackouts. So I want you guys to be prepared in California. I want you guys to learn from the California residents. Um, this can spill over in, into, uh, different areas, you know, into that Nevada neighboring States. It can. Okay. Um, so be prepared you know, have the water purification methods, you know, like, um, especially if you have a well with uh, an electrical pump, you know, and you don't have running water anymore, you know, know some ways that to procure and, um, and purify water, you know, for your area. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. You know, if you're prepared, um, you're not, you're not going to panic, you know, you're, you're going to be prepared and you're going to have, uh, what's necessary. So anyway, leave your comments down below about what you think about this whole situation. Thank you all so much for watching Conquer Tomorrow by preparing today. Talk to y'all later. Bye.